Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today, out of necessity, uh, we're going to do some containers that I can use to put some of my Christmas ornaments in. Um, I've been really struggling to find enough to display the items that I'm going to be putting out for Christmas. So I had this big box and I generally just keep um, faux florals in it in um, my crafting area so that I can use them in crafting, but I needed to use it for, I have some very large candy canes that I wrap in, um, in the warm and natural fabric and, and then uh, use some gingham to add the stripes. And so they're very large. So the, one, the big plastic ones that you get at the Dollar Tree and um, I like to have some of those covered. I've been doing those for several years now. I like to cover them and, um, and they just sell well for people who want to put some greenery and maybe a big crock at the front door or um, just in different areas in their house. And you can stick these candy canes in for just a little bit of extra color. So now I got this rice paper uh, from a friend of mine, and um, I'm, I know where she uh, found it, and uh, so I'm going to add that link in the description for some of these papers, actually, that I'll be using because I got the, a lot of these from, from her. So uh, I'll put that link, and it's just a general link. You can find all of these unless they're sold out in that same link. But I love this one and I want to add just a little festiveness to this box. I don't want to change the color. I just want to leave it wood because it makes it, uh, a, I think it's a lot better look for those candy canes to not paint it. Uh, but I am going to um, water down some buttercream and just kind of do a, a white wash with the buttercream color. And then I'll still have the, the wood grain look, uh, but then this um, rice paper won't just kind of stand out too much. It'll blend a little bit better. So, um, so I just watered down some buttercream paint and, and then I um, brushed it on and wiped it off. And I, I watered it down probably about half water and half paint. And it's very important when you're doing this to keep your strokes going in one direction so that you don't take away from that wood grain look. But I went over the whole thing and again, as soon as I put it on, I just kind of wiped it off and, um, and then let it dry well. And then I decoupaged the, the rice paper on the front. Now, if you've never decoupaged with, um, with rice paper, then it's something that uh, once you try it, you'll be hooked because uh, you don't get the wrinkling that you get with many of the other papers that you would decoupage with. Uh, I still, with one this size, I still want to start with just a little bit at the top and then just kind of work my way down. But, um, but these work so well. It's my favorite paper to decoupage with. And I apologize that uh, this video is going to be primarily for Christmas because I really am, um, even though I have a lot done for Christmas, we're going to be doing our Christmas open house this year in October, so um, I'm having to make sure to get a lot done, and we have lots of new um, new designs that we're going to be doing, and so we've just been super busy every day, and I just really don't have a lot of time to do much else. And I realized that these videos this early won't get the views that, uh, that I'm used to getting, but I can't worry about that. I've just got to get this done. And, um, and then once I'm caught up, I can go back to some of my regular thrift flips. 
So that's all that I'm going to do to this one. I'll finish it off with a clear coat uh, and I'm just going to put a matte clear coat over this and that's all that I'm going to do to this box. And most of the uh, containers that I'm going to be doing today, I'm not going to have for sale. I'm just going to keep them back for uh, to use in future Christmas seasons. I had this little crate and it's to keep drinks in and it had this little opener on the side. So I removed that uh, because I'm also going to be doing the um, some small candy canes and um, so I get them uh, several to a pack. I think I ordered those from Amazon um, and I cover those also with the warm and natural fabric and then um, the gingham stripes. Uh, and I just get a dollar each on these, but I have very little in them and, um, and they sell real well to put uh, in little containers so and I use them in some of my crafting also so I decapat posh these Christmas cardinals on each side and then I'm going to do a little bit of painting on uh, the front and back and I always like to tear out my images I just feel like you get um, a more organic edge on it when you do your decapage now here's where I'm going to paint so I'm going to paint the handle in the color buttercream and then the top uh, little board I'm going to paint it in the color barnwood and then the bottom one will go back to the buttercream and I just felt like that gave it kind of a candy, stri uh, candy stripe look uh, and I'm also going to add a little stencil to the top of each side of this and um, it is something that um, has something more to do with the candy and I realize that that doesn't go with the birds on the side but it's just something last minute that we decided to do and I felt like it went much better with the candy canes again those little cardinals on the side won't have anything to do with that but they'll be Christmassy and the colors work together well so uh, if I had it to do over again, I would have put something else on the sides, but uh, I still was happy with how it turned out. Now I'm going to be adding some um, Van Dyke Brown Glaze to the painted part of this because I wanted to give it more of an aged look. But because I don't want it to take too dark, I'm going over this with a clear finish. I think I'm using the Dixie Belle satin finish here, but any clear coat that you want to use will work. Um, I just went over each of these with that, and then once it dried well, then I went over them with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And that gave it just more of a country look, and, and not that, sh even though I used buttercream, I still felt like it needed to tone down some. And here it is after Tammy put uh, this stencil on the front. And I think that really added a lot to this. And then she just put a dollar each on the hang tag so that we didn't have to price them individually. And this wooden bucket is another item that I want to make a container to use uh, through the holidays. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to put in it. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, put some snowballs in it. And I made these last year. And all I did was just wad up some newspaper. And, uh, and then I just covered that with strips of fabric. I just kind of wrapped those around it. And, um, and brushed over it with some Mod Podge. And and put some shimmery glitter on it and we sold those last year as bowl fillers so i may end up putting those in this i'm not sure yet but i don't want to limit this to just christmas so on the other side i'm gonna add a stamp uh, more of an all occasion stamp that can be used for christmas and my very good friend sent me a couple of stamp sets from IOD. One is Reverie, and that's what I'm going to be using on the other side, and it is absolutely gorgeous. 
The other one is, is very pretty also, and I'll do it in another video. I don't want to give away what it is, but I'm excited uh, for that one also. So I give this two coats. Actually, I think I end up having to do three coats of the Color Buttercream on this on the inside and out. And on this side, I'm going to be doing a Christmas stencil. And I will link that in the, in the description. I actually um, bought these on Amazon uh, with a set of several Christmas stencils. And, um, and I got them at a really good price. So uh, I'm going to have some, some new stencils to use on some of my projects this year. And I wanted something to do with snowballs, and I didn't have a stencil for that. But this uh, one that says North Pole is, is going to work really well anyway. And no, I don't have three hands. One of these is Tammy. She was giving me a hand as she walked by. So now I'm going to stencil this on, but I'm going to use uh, ink on this, and I'm just going to use my Black Stays on ink and a makeup brush. Uh, I will add these makeup brushes in the description because if you've never used these, they are awesome for stenciling. Uh, that is stenciling with ink, uh, but I always use these when I stencil with ink, and it just, they work so well. I apologize for the sound of the mower that you may occasionally hear. I just had to take what time I could to do this voiceover, and my husband happens to be mowing the grass. So I did this stamp or stencil on one side, and then again on the other side, I'm going to be using part of the Reverie stamp. And I just wanted to keep it so that uh, when it wasn't during the holidays, I could turn it around and use it to display something else in. And here is the stamp set that my friend so generously sent to me. I think this is absolutely a beautiful stamp set. And um, I'm so excited to use it. I'm not going to use a lot of it today. I'm just going to use a small portion of this. Uh, but I was definitely excited because I love this look. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I'll, I will include her link in the description uh, in case you guys want to order this. And actually, it's the same link uh, that I added for the rice papers. You can find all of these through that link. Again, I'm only using a small portion of this one, but I love these little angels here. So... That's going to go on the front, and then uh, I'll add a couple of other small pieces uh, to the sides. But I just love the look of these angels. And actually, this could work for Christmas, uh, but it, it won't be limited to that. Now, after I apply these stamps, then I'm going to do some light distressing on this bucket and finish it off with a clear finish. And I'm just using Dixie Belle Satin Finish. But I'm really rubbing carefully because I wanna make sure and get good contact, especially because you've got these metal bands uh, that uh, keep it from being completely flush. Now, anytime that you get a new stamp set, it's always a good idea to take some fine grit sandpaper and um, give it a good sanding so that it will accept the ink better. But again, <clears throat> once I got these on and lightly distressed it, then I put a clear coat on it, and, uh, and then that's all that I did to this bucket. Now, I think this is the perfect area here to put maybe someone's initials or something like that on it, but obviously I left mine blank. Here is the Christmas side, and, and then this is the not-so-Christmas side. And then the next container that I'm going to do, or actually this one is some sort of a rack, uh, actually for books, and I see these all the time in thrift stores, and I very rarely buy them. I'm not sure why I bought this one. Uh, but I got to thinking I'm going to be doing some wreaths, um, some wreath ornaments, 
and they will display in this really well so I'm gonna make this one over somewhat to put those in and this is a, a um, scrapbooking paper that is also this image can be found on that link and I thought this was perfect because of its shape to go on the sides of these so I'm just gonna put one of these on each side and I, I antiqued around the edges with uh, my um, antique oxide ink from Tim Holtz and um, and I'm going to decoupage one of these to each side and then um, that's all that I'm going to do to this one because I want to keep this wood color it's a good wood and um, I think it will make a good display just by adding these to the ends and I don't know why I hadn't thought about using these to display wreaths in before. But again, it's just the perfect shape to put the wreaths in. And um, so once I clear coat this and let it dry, then it's ready for the wreaths to, to be displayed in. I think it's just absolutely perfect for these. And next I'm going to show you guys how I made these wreaths. They're very simple to make. Uh, I generally get these little foam wreaths from the Dollar Tree, but I've been waiting on them to come in and they haven't come in yet, obviously. So uh, I think the ones from the Dollar Tree are more like a five inch, uh, but I found these on um, Amazon and they're six inch and they're cheaper than at the Dollar Tree So I've already cut strips of the warm and natural fabric and uh, You can get that on Amazon. I usually get it at Walmart uh, but um, I cut it into probably about one inch strips and wrapped the foam wreath in it uh, I did coffee stain my warm and natural I always uh, just dip it in some coffee wring it out and let it dry and um, it just gives it a better look I feel like uh, but I've already done that and covered these with it just by hot gluing those strips wrapped around it and now I'm taking some fabric now I looked for what I usually use is red and white gingham uh, but I went to Joann's to get some more because I didn't realize I was out and um, they were out so I ended up getting this uh, this pin striping here and I really like that I guess it would be called a ticking fabric but um, but I really like it it I ended up blocking it as well as I do when I use the gingham Again, these are very quick to do. You just wrap that at an angle around to form your stripes. And then, uh, and then I'm just going to add some greenery and embellishment to the front. And I'm using just little scraps of Christmas greenery here and uh, just gluing it on. And then uh, once I add enough of the greenery, then I'm going to add some berries and a pine cone and... Um, and then just kind of finish that off. Now on some of my wreaths, I take some um, white paint on my paintbrush and just kind of dab it over it to add some extra snow. But this one, I didn't feel like needed it. And I have one more Christmas craft uh, after this one uh, that uh, we made from wood and um, we actually used two by fours on it and my husband cut out a pattern for me or i drew the pattern for him and then he just kind of cut it out but it's a very simple pattern and i actually found it on pinterest and did mine very very similar to the one that i found on pinterest because i thought it was just perfect so after i finish the embellishment on this one i'm just going to tie a loop in a piece of jute twine and glue that to the top and that's going to be my hanger and there are some of them that we finished today and i think they're a really good size for an an oversized ornament now here are the two by fours that my husband cut the first one was nine inches and the second one was seven inches 
and then five inches and then uh, then it just cut a little piece of scrap wood to use actually we had to have three of these because that's what will go on the bottom of each of these and that one was four and a half by three inches and we also used a small wooden dowel and um, and some fencing board and out of the fencing board we cut this little pattern or my husband cut this little pattern and this is going to be the flame if you haven't figured out these are going to be candles and here is one after um, I, I sanded it down sanded those edges down now here is my inspiration piece so i'm not going to be adding the greenery and the bow on mine um, and they'll be somewhat different uh, I want the flame to actually be the color of a flame somewhat. Uh, but here are my pieces. And what we did is we cut three of those and those last pieces. And we attached uh, all of these to that. So that would be the base. And we hot glued it, or not hot glued it, we wood glued it and uh, used a brad nailer and added them that way and then to add that flame we cut a small piece of that wooden dowel and drilled a hole in the top for it and then drilled a hole in the bottom of the flame and then we just added some wood glue and um, that's how we put it together so these are so simple to put together uh, the cuts are very very simple all except the flame but now you don't have to use wood for your flame you could use other items um, for your flame you could use cardboard if you wanted uh, but there's just other options that you could do without having to bother with cutting the flame it's just uh, my husband didn't mind doing it so that's what I'm going to be using now starting out with these uh, and this makes three different size candles that I will sell as a set so what I started out doing is um, I stained all of these with Van Dyke Brown with my Van Dyke Brown glaze and I just wanted it to be kind of cohesive and uh, there's parts of it that I won't be painting uh, and I'll just leave the stains so um, again I went over all of these with the Van Dyke Brown glaze and then let them dry well and then once they were all dry then I took some of the color Rebel Yellow that's just a soft yellow and I just very haphazardly painted it. I wanted some of that wood to show through. So as you can see, I didn't, I didn't give it full coverage, but I did keep my strokes going in the same direction. And then once I finished painting those, then, um, then I'm gonna paint the candle part of it in the color buttercream. And I'll do the same with that. I, I'm not going to worry about full coverage on that also, but I'll keep my strokes in, going in the same direction. And I'm carefully uh, trimming out around the bottom because I want the base to stay the wood color. And I also want the little wooden dowel to stay the wood color. So I just kind of carefully paint it out around those. But um, again, I didn't worry about full coverage here. Uh, I wanted some of that wood to show through. And then once I got them uh, painted and let that dry, uh, then um, I'm gonna, uh, I needed to seal these anyway. So I decided uh, to uh, use some of my chameleon wax and uh, go over these and um, you can also find the chameleon wax in that same link uh, but what it does it just gives you a very very slight shimmer uh, it's not glitter uh, but it is very sh it has a, a very slight shimmer and i just thought that would be really pretty on the candles but first, I wanted to do a little bit of extra distressing on this. I still have some of the wood showing through, but I wanted to bring more of that through on the edges. So I just kind of took my little finger sander and went over it and just did some more light distressing. 
And I also wanted to give this uh, the appearance of candle wax dripping. And sometimes I do that with hot glue. But I just happened to have some candle wax melted. And so I just dripped some of that on. The, the disadvantage to using candle wax is obviously you can't paint over it. And I'm going to be using that chameleon wax over this. But I don't mind if it doesn't stick to the actual uh, candle wax as long as it sticks to all my paint so I just kind of let that drip down and um, again another advantage is that um, if your candle wax is really hot which mine was then um, then it drips a little quicker than you want it to so I just had to kind of be careful about the dripping and not let it drip too much Again, I could have let, let that cool a little bit more and, and it wouldn't have dripped as fast. But I was happy with the look that I got. It was subtle, but uh, candle wax is subtle and it was enough to, to give it that appearance. So once my candle wax was good and solid, then, um, then I used my chameleon wax on it. And you just have to shake that up really well because the the shimmer will kind of settle down to the bottom. So just make sure you get it shook up really well. And then I went over this with one coat. And then I decided that I wanted a little extra shimmer. So once that dried, I put even a second coat on it. Now I went over the, the white and the yellow with this because I wanted both to have kind of a shimmery look. And you have to look really closely and I'm afraid I'm a little out of frame here so um, you can't see it quite as well. But uh, it does have just a very slight shimmer. And that's good for me because I don't like a lot of glitter. Uh, I just want that, I just wanted that little shimmer to this. And then once that dried, I also took some of my gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle and put it on my finger and just kind of rubbed around the edges of the frame or the flame and uh, just added a little shimmer to that. So that's what they look like finished uh, until I added a hang tag. Again, I didn't really want to add any greenery to this. Uh, I could have done that and, and thought seriously about it, but I like the simple look of it. And so just adding a hang tag, I felt like was just enough. And I found this scripture stamp in my stash uh, from Matthew 5 that says, Be the light. So uh, I thought that was the perfect little finish. Now I got another hang tag in the mail, actually two hang tags in the mail, but I didn't get to open them up and look at them, so I didn't get to add them to this one. So I'll definitely have some to add to my next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.